Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome back. Today we're solving one and two step problems using data. And the I can objective reads, I can use data in picture graphs, bar graphs, and line plots to solve one and two step how many more and how many less problems. So boys and girls, some of you joined me on the WebEx yesterday to review line plots. And I had that WebEx to uh, go over some of the misconceptions that I saw that you were making um, and to address any questions and talk about the types of questions that can be answered using uh, a line plot. Since some of you didn't, I wanna go over line plots once again before you move on to your Nearpod activity for today. So a line plot, boys and girls, it's a graph and it shows information and the kind of information that it shows is the frequency of something happening. The frequency is how many times something happens or something occurs. Um, so if you take a look at our page or at your screen, you'll see that the line plot is down here and it's this part and it looks like a number line. It's set up as a number line and we use X's to record how many times a number happens. If you take a look on the left, you have a tally chart and our tally chart is talking about ages and the number of people. So in the first column, you have the age seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11. And then on the right in tally marks, you have the number of people that are that age. So for example, I see that there are one, two people who are seven years old. So now I'm going to show you how to build a line plot using the information that you find on your tally table. Okay, so I started off with seven and I locate the number seven on my uh, line plot, which is like a number line. Okay, and since there are one, two children or two people that are seven years old, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna make two X's. Each X represents one person. And I do the X's vertically, so I put one on top of the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my first X and then my second X. So those two X's represent that there are two people who are seven years old. Then I move on to eight years old. And since I have four tally marks, I know that there are four people who are eight years old. I find the eight on my number line, on my line plot, and I go ahead and I make four X's. One, two, three, four. Now I move on to nine years old. If I look back on my tally chart, I see that there's one person who is nine years old. And then I do the same thing for 10. When I look at my tally chart, I notice this symbol. And I know right away that when I see that, it's a group of five. So I don't have to count all my tally marks because I know that's a group of five. So there's five there and one more. I have six people who are 10 years old. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then finally I get to my 11. And again, I see that there are four tally marks for my 11. So I go ahead and I draw four X's to represent the four people who are 11 years old. I also make sure boys and girls down here, you see that there is like a title to it, a label, and those are ages. Um, and that helps anybody who's reading um, this line plot to know what you're talking about. So now let's look at some of the questions that we can answer uh, using a line plot. Okay, the first one, what is the least age represented on this graph? So the least age, boys and girls, this is where the misconception comes in. A lot of children or a lot of people see the word least and they look for the X's that are the least and they say oh nine years old is the least but the question is asking what is the least or the minimum age represented on this graph so what they want you to look at they want you to look at the ages seven eight nine ten 
and 11. And what's the least or what is the minimum age represented on the grass uh, on the graph? Well, the smallest age or the least or the minimum is seven. So the least age represented on this graph is seven years old. What is the greatest or maximum age represented on this graph? Again, they're asking us to look at the ages, not at the frequency or the quantity uh, that those ages happen. So we're looking again at the ages, the seven, the eight, the nine, the 10, and 11. So what is the oldest person represented on this graph? That's right, the 11. Okay, so 11 years old is the greatest age or the maximum age represented on this graph. Okay, let's take a look at the next question. How many people are seven years old? Now, boys and girls, how many? Now we're looking for quantities or frequencies. So now we're gonna look at those X's and see how many times a specific age happens. So we know that we're looking at our seven years of age and we wanna know how many um, X's there are for the seven. Well, there's one, two. So how many people are seven years old? Two people are seven years old. Okay. How many people are older than nine? I want to go over a common misconception for this one, boys and girls. A lot of children would say, oh, how many people are older than nine? Hmm. It would be all of these people. Do you see the mistake that I made if I include all of those people? Not yet? Well, the problem is asking for older than nine. And I included this one, which is nine years old. Is nine older than nine? No. So we can't include the people who are nine years old. So if we want to answer how many people are older than nine, well, seven is not older than nine. Eight is not older than nine. Nine is not older than nine. So we only want to include people who are 10 and 11 years old. And now we can go ahead and look at our X's. We have one, two, three, four, five, six people who are 10 years old. And then we have one, two, three, four people who are 11 years old. So six plus four equals 10. So 10 people, are older than nine. Okay, let's look at our next question. How many more people are 10 than seven? So now it's asking us to compare. It's asking us to compare how many more, and it's asking us to compare the 10 year olds and the seven year olds. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle those two groups, my 10 year olds and my seven year olds. And now I wanna compare those. Well, let's see, I have one, two, seven year olds. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, 10 year olds. So I see that there's more 10 year olds because six is greater than two. And now they're asking me to compare how much greater, how many more um, 10 year olds. So I can do a simple subtraction. Six 10 year olds minus two seven year olds gives me four extra 10 year olds. Okay, I can also do that by comparing my X's, right? I have one X here and one X here. I have one X here and one X here, and then I don't have any more seven-year-olds. So I have one, two, three, four extra X's for the 10-year-olds. Let's try and clean up the board a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, and let's look at our next question. How many fewer people are nine than 11? So boys and girls, this is a very similar question. And even though it's asking how many fewer, and the last question was asking how many more, it's still a problem where you're comparing two quantities. So let's take a look at the quantities that we're comparing. Well, we know that uh, we wanna look at the two groups at the nine-year-olds and at the 11-year-olds. Okay, so we wanna look at this group and this group. And we see that nine-year-olds are fewer than the amount of 11-year-olds. So let's see how much fewer or how many less. So there's one nine-year-old and there's one, two, three, four 11-year-olds. So four minus one equals three. So there are three fewer nine-year-olds. Um, and if we compare the x's, well, we have an x here and an x here, so that's the same. And now we see that the 11-year-olds have one, two, three extra x's, or the nine-year-olds have three fewer x's. Okay. And now let's look at the last question that um, I set up for you. How many people are represented on this graph? What do you think you can do uh, to find out how many people are represented on this graph? Well, there's a few ways to do it. I know that every X stands for one person on this uh, line plot. So I can go ahead and count the X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And I know that if I have seventeen X's, that means that there are seventeen people being represented. I can also use addition. I can say two seven year olds plus four eight year olds plus one nine year old plus six 10-year-olds, plus four 11-year-olds. And now I would just go ahead and group my numbers together. So two plus four is six, and one plus six is seven, and I bring down the plus four. So now I can group them in friendly numbers. I have my six and my four, which equals 10, plus seven more equals 17. Okay, either way I did it, boys and girls, I got the same answer. So 17 people are represented on this graph. And let me ask a follow-up question. How many ages are represented on this graph? So now you hear my question and you hear that I'm talking about the ages again. So there is one, two, three, four, five different ages that are represented on this graph. Okay, boys and girls, I hope um, this little tutorial helped you a little bit with the line plots and cleared up some of the misconceptions that you've been making. On the next slide, you're going to see a quick video, um, a math on the spot video from HMH, and then you're gonna be directed to a Nearpod activity. Uh, the Nearpod activity is going to include your bar models, your picture graphs, and your line plots. And you did really well on your bar models and your picture graphs. So when you complete the activity, just take your time, read through the problem, and look at the graphs carefully. just out in my garden watering my avocado plants. <laughs> I'm gonna make guacamole with my plants someday. <laughs> garden club members recorded the height of their avocado plant to the nearest inch in a line plot. Let's look at it. Here it is. You can see that the height of the avocado plant is represented here horizontally. And you can see that this is in inches. Where it says six, there are three X's. 
You remember that each x represents 1. So, that's what we have here. Each x represents or stands for one plant. Okay. So, the number of plants that is 6 inches tall in this particular avocado field is 1, 2, 3. And you can continue this way. For example, the number of avocado plants that are 8 inches tall is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5. Okay. Now let's get to the question. How many more plants are 8 or 9 inches tall than 6 or 7 inches tall? How are we going to figure this out? Well, let's begin by figuring out how many plants that are 8 or 9 inches tall. Okay, here we go. We'll look in these two columns. I'll, in fact, I'll circle it just to be sure we all know what we're talking about here. These two uh, columns here represent the number of avocado plants that are 8 inches tall and 9 inches tall. Let's add these up. Let's see. Uh, we counted this before. There were five avocado plants that were eight inches tall. And there are one, two, three avocado plants that are nine inches tall. So all together, can you see that we have eight plants that are eight or nine inches tall? Now we're going to figure out how many plants are six or seven inches tall. Well, we have three six-inch plants, and we have three seven-inch plants, and all together that gives us six plants that are six or seven inches tall. So back to the question. How many more plants are eight or nine inches tall than six or seven inches tall? Let me ask the question again. How many plants are 8 or 9 inches tall than 6 or 7 inches tall? You see, we're comparing these two numbers, 8 and 6. And to find how many more, we will subtract. So here we go. 8 minus 6 gives us 2. So, 2 more plants are, six, are 8 or 9 inches tall than six or seven inches tall. Well, I better get back to my watering. I can just taste that guacamole now. Have a great math day, everybody. Okay, boys and girls, now it's your turn. Once you feel comfortable with line plots, I want you to go ahead and go over to nearpod.com and put in the code that applies to you. For English, it's B, G V M P, but espanol F E X L G E para português Q V I K E. And don't forget, you can text me, email me, call me, whatever you need. Um, if you have any questions or if you get stuck along the way, um, also don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. See you tomorrow.